हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू दी चैप्टर नंबर थर्टी ऑफ ब्लेंडर मास्टर कोर्स ज्योमेट्री नोट क्रिएटिंग अ स्नो मैन सो फार इन दिस कोर्स वी लर्न अबाउट द मॉडलिंग टूल्स इन ब्लेंडर देन वी कवर्ड ऑल द मॉडिफायर्स इन ब्लेंडर आफ्टर दैट वी अंडरस्टूड अबाउट द मेटीरियल टेक्चर एंड नोट क्रिएटेड लॉर्ड्स ऑफ बेसिक शेडर्स एंड प्रोसीजरल शेडर्स देन वी कवर्ड द बेसिक्स एंड इवन अंडरस्टूड द एडवांस लेवल ऑफ एनिमेशन एंड फ्रॉम दिस चैप्टर वील बी स्टार्टिंग आर जर्नी ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग द ज्योमेट्री नोट इन ब्लेंडर अंडरस्टैंडिंग दिस अमेजिंग कंसेप्ट विल रिक्वायर अस अ टोटल ऑफ ट्वेंटी plus chapters because we'll be covering all the geometry nodes that are present in blender and in each chapter we'll be creating different scenes with the help of the geometry nodes that we would have covered in that specific chapter and in this chapter we'll first understand about how the geometry nodes work and then we'll cover all these nodes in complete detail and we'll be using these nodes to make this snowman in blender and yes if you are new to this course then do check out the previous 30 chapters from the link of the playlist in the pinned comment now to start with the geometry nodes we first have to switch to the geometry nodes workspace so click on this workspace which is named as geometry nodes and this layout appears here this is called the spreadsheet this is the geometry nodes editor and this is the 3d viewport now to get a geometry node we have to click on this new button and this is the basic geometry node applied in the modify properties here you can see a modifier named geometry nodes added automatically so basically geometry nodes is a modifier and that is why it is appearing here and now moving ahead here in the spreadsheet we have information about the object object that we have selected which is the cube in this case the first option here is the vertex and it basically tells about the number of vertices and their positions in the 3d viewport then here you have the option of edges then the faces and the face corners and a lot of other things and we'll be discovering all these options later on when we dive deeper in the concept of geometry nodes but for now we'll be understanding about the mesh options in the spreadsheet the first one is the vertex here you can see the number 8 which represents the number of vertices and here you can see that you have the position of the specific vertices in the x y and z axis here one thing to notice is that the indexing of the vertices is not starting from 1 like usually when we are counting things we count it like 1 2 3 4 4 but in this case the counting or the indexing is started from 0 and then 1 2 and then it ends on 7 similarly here you can see that we have 12 edges or 6 faces and 24 face corners but for now we'll move to the geometry nodes and here you can see in the geometry nodes editor that we have this group input and this group output the group input basically represents this cube that we are having right now whatever changes that we'll make in between these two will get applied to our cube object which was the input and the output that will be generated will get connected to this group output and will also be seen on this cube but since we are not having anything in between the geometry input and the geometry output as a result we are not able to see any changes here but if i go to the geometry nodes editor and break this connection by holding the control button and right clicking and dragging like this then a cube will disappear and that is because the connection between the input and the output no longer exists as a result whatever information this group input was carrying about the cube is not able to reach the group output which has to generate the output in a 3d viewport and therefore we can't see anything and if i take the geometry socket and connect it to the geometry socket of the output then a cube will reappear and if you want to add any specific geometry node then you simply have to press shift plus a and here you will find a list of all the categories of geometry nodes that are present in blender also you will find this category of texture nodes about which we learned in the previous chapters of this course but we'll be learning about them again while understanding the geometry nodes now suppose i ask you to change this cube into a uv sphere and that too with the help of Of geometry nodes usually you would have gone to the 3d viewport and deleted this cube and then would have added a uv sphere but with geometry nodes you simply need to press shift plus a and here you have an option of mesh and if i go to the primitives you will find a list of the mesh primitives that we used to add in our scene by pressing shift plus a so if i select the uv sphere then this node will appear and if i left click to place it here now to convert this cube into a uv sphere i have to take this mesh socket and connect it to the geometry socket of the group output and here we have have the cube converted into the uv sphere basically what we did here is that we broke the connection between the group input which was carrying the information of the cube and the group output and we made a new connection with this node carrying the information about a uv sphere and connected it to the group output and now if i go to the spreadsheet and select this vertex we now observe that we have different values about the vertex in the mesh as compared to the ones that we had when this object was a cube 
and this is how the mesh primitive works in the geometry nodes so whenever you have to change the structure of your object to any other mesh simply press shift plus a go to mesh and in the primitives you can select that particular mesh type for example if i select the cylinder and place it here and to change the structure of this uv sphere into a cylinder i'll take this mesh socket and connect it to the geometry and here we have a cylinder in our scene and there's one more thing that you can do which is to select a particular node and hold down control plus shift and left click and then this viewer node will appear which basically allows you to preview things quickly for example if i go to the cylinder and press control plus shift and left click then we'll be able to view the cylinder so you can easily switch between different mesh primitive nodes with the use of this viewer node and also one more thing to notice here is that here in the uv sphere and the cylinder node you have these options of changing the settings of that particular mesh for example the vertices the radius the depth of the cylinder so you can use these settings to change the way how your mesh would look like in the 3d view editor and yes this shortcut of holding control shift and left clicking will work only if you have the node wrangler add-on turned on we learnt about this add-on in this chapter of the course and for now I will delete this cylinder node by selecting it and pressing X and will connect this UV sphere to the group output. Let's also select this viewer and press X to delete it and now we simply have this UV sphere node connected to the group output. And now we are moving to the next topic of this chapter which is the transform node and this transform node is basically used to change the position, rotation and scale of your object directly from the geometry node editor. To add it press shift plus A, go to geometry and in the operations you will find this transform geometry we'll place it in between the uv sphere and the output and it will get directly connected to both and you can simply change these values to change the position rotation and the scale of your object for example the translation here basically means the position of this object in the 3d view editor for example if i change the translation in the x-axis then it will move like this in the x-axis similarly in the y-axis and also in the z-axis and if i go to the rotation and change the rotation in x-axis then it will begin to rotate in the x axis similarly the y and the z axis also then you have the scaling option and if i change the scale value in the x axis then it will get scaled up like this in the x axis so you can try to change these values to easily transform the geometry of your object and that too in the geometry node editor to change these to the default values one way is to left click and drag like this and now if i press 0 and press enter the position is now again set to the default value of 0 but another way to return back to the default value is to hover your cursor over some value and press backspace and now the rotation in all the three axes is set to the default value of 0 degrees similarly if i go to the scale and press backspace it will turn the value to 0 however we need the default values to be 1 in order to see the object so i'll select all three of them and type 1 press enter and here we have the uv sphere again so till now we understood about adding some specific mesh with the help of the mesh primitive then we learnt about changing the position rotation and the scaling of your object with the help of the transform geometry now suppose you want to make a snowman with the help of these geometry nodes for this we have one of the uv spheres added to our scene but we'll need another one at the top of this uv sphere for this i will select this node press shift plus d to create a duplicate and let's place it here and right now we can see only one uv sphere in our scene that is because the second node is not connected to this node system we need to join both these uv spheres together in order to view both of them in the 3d view editor for this we'll be using a new node which is called the join geometry node to add it press shift plus a Go to geometry and here you will find the joint geometry let's place it here and you can notice here that the geometry socket here is not circular in shape it is somewhat oval in shape this indicates that it can accept more than one inputs at a time for example if i break the node connection in between the transform geometry and the group output by holding the control button and dragging the right mouse button like this and take this geometry socket and connect it to the geometry socket of the joint geometry similarly if i go to the uv sphere and take this mesh socket and connect it to the geometry socket then it will accept both the inputs in this socket and to get a preview of the result here simply hold down control plus shift and left click on the joint geometry here you might be thinking that only one of the uv spheres is present but it is not true actually the position of both the uv spheres is same and that is why it appears like this but if i go to the transform geometry which is connected to the first uv sphere and let's suppose i change the translation in the z axis to something like 1.2 meters then this uv sphere will move upwards and now we can see both the uv spheres in our scene and since 
will be making a snowman with the help of these two UV spheres. We have to reduce the size of the upper UV sphere. So I'll go to the transform geometry node, select the three scale values and let's reduce it to a lower number like 0.7 or 0.8 and now it looks perfect. And so this is how the joint geometry node works. In fact, it can even be used to join more than two nodes together. For example, if I select this UV sphere and the transform geometry, press shift plus D to create a duplicate and place it here. Let's zoom out. And now if I take the geometry socket of this third UV sphere and connect it to the joint geometry, then it will take it as an input and will add another UV sphere in our scene. To view that UV sphere, we have to change the translation in the Z axis. Right now it is set to 1.2, but let's increase it to a higher number like 2 meters or maybe 2.2 meters and now it looks like this. This UV sphere will act as the head of our snowman. So let's reduce the scale value to something even lower like 0.6 and now it looks perfect. Now suppose you want these UV spheres to be smooth. Earlier you simply used to right click and select the shade smooth but it does not work in this case and that is because we have to use the geometry nodes only to apply the shade smooth to it. To do this we'll be using the next node which is the set shade smooth. So for this press shift plus A go to mesh and here in the right you will find this set shade smooth so i'll select this and let's place it here and to connect it to the rest of the node system simply select it and move it in between the join geometry and the viewer node and here the shade smooth is applied to all the three uv spheres and now suppose you want that the shade smooth should be applied only to the middle uv sphere and not to the others for this we first have to remove this shade smooth from this connection between the join geometry and the viewer to do this simply hold down alt and left click to drag it and it will get disconnected and since it is nowhere in the connection all the three UV spheres are shaded flat again. And to apply shade smooth only to the second UV sphere, that is this one, we have to connect this set shade smooth node in between the transform geometry of the second UV sphere and the join geometry. So I left click on it and drag it and let's bring it here. And if I release, then it will get connected to the second UV sphere and the join geometry. And as a result, we see here that only the second UV sphere is now shaded smooth and not the others. Previously, we connected the set shade smooth in such a way that it took input from the joint geometry which was carrying information about all the three UV spheres. As a result, all of them were shaded smooth. And since we are making a snowman, so we'll need the shade smooth applied to all the three UV spheres. As a result, I have to place this set shade smooth node in between the joint geometry and the viewer node. For this, I will again hold down the alt button and left click to remove it and let's place it in between joint geometry and the viewer node. And do ensure that you are not holding down the alt button while dropping it in between the two nodes and now this shade smooth is applied to all the three uv spheres and now the last thing is to give some material to our snowman for this we'll be using another node which is the set material node so press shift plus a go to material and select set material and we'll place it after the set shade smooth this set material node will help us to give some material to this snowman previously whenever we needed to give any material to any object we either used to go to the material properties here and do the changes or we used to open the shader editor but since we are working on the geometry nodes as a result we'll be using the set material node to make the changes in the material but yes we'll still be working on the material properties here and we'll drop down that particular material that we create in this material option of the set material for example if i change the name of this material to snow and go to the base color and let's change it to blue color let's also turn on the render view and to see the material on our object we'll go to the set material and here in the material option we'll select snow and here this snow material is applied to our object and since it is placed after the join geometry node, so the material will be applied to all the three UV spheres. Now to make it look like a real snow texture, we'll be doing some changes in the material in shader editor. To open the shader editor here, I will change this spreadsheet into the shader editor. So click on this icon and select the shader editor. Let's close this toolbar by pressing N and to increase the size of this window, simply take your cursor over here, left click and drag like this. Let's zoom in and now to create the snow material, we'll be using the noise texture. So press shift plus A go to texture and add the noise texture let's place it here and to get the input node and the mapping node connected to it i will use the shortcut ctrl plus t but this shortcut will only work if you have the node wrangler turned on now here in the texture coordinate we'll change the input to the object socket and connect it to the vector and to connect the noise texture to the output hold on ctrl plus shift and left click on the noise texture the basic noise texture is now visible on our object and now we'll be using two noise textures and we'll mix them together to create the snow material for this with this noise texture selected press shift plus D let's place the duplicate over here and to combine both of them press shift plus A go to color and select the mixed color let's place it here 
To mix both of them, I'll take this color socket of the noise texture and connect it to the color A. Similarly, I'll take the color socket of the noise texture number 2 and connect it to the color B. And to connect this mix socket to the output, hold down Ctrl and Shift and left click on it. And here we see that both the noise textures are applied to our object. Let's do some changes in the noise textures. For example, in the second one, we'll keep the roughness to a very high value like 500 or 600. Let's also reduce the detailing to a very low value like 0.1 and also the roughness to a very low value like 0.1 again. The reason for doing this is that we'll be using a combination of both the noise textures to create a realistic looking snow material. So one of them has a low scale value with high detailing and roughness and the other one has a high scale value with low detailing and low roughness. But we'll be needing more effect of the noise texture number one because it is having low scale but high detailing and roughness. And to do this, we simply have to reduce the factor to a lower value like 0.1 and now it will have influence of the first noise texture much more than the second. And to give it some color, we'll be adding a color ramp. First, let's take the material output and let's place it here. Right now, this principal BSTF is disconnected, but we'll place it in between the mix node and the output. And to give it some color, press Shift plus A, go to Converter and select the color ramp. Let's place it here. Now with the pointer number one selected, I'll click here to change the color. Let's increase the brightness with the help of this brightness slider. And let's change the color number one to light blue color. And for the color at the pointer number two, let's keep it to white color only. And now it looks like this. But to make it look realistic and to give it a 3D bump effect, let's add a bump node in the shader editor. So press Shift plus A, go to vector and select the bump. Let's place it here. Take this normal socket and connect it to the normal of the principal BSTF. Then take this result socket and connect it to the height socket of the bump node. And here we see the bump effect added to the material of our object. One more thing to notice here is that the result socket of this mix node is connected to the height socket of the bump node, which means that this yellow colored socket is connected to this gray colored socket of the bump node. In one of my previous chapters, I told you that usually we connect the sockets of same color together, but there is no hard and fast rule for this. You can even connect sockets of different colors together and you will end up getting some different results. In this case, this mix node was carrying information about these two noise textures and was having only one option, which is the result socket as the output. And we needed to apply the bump node to the combination of these two noise textures. As a result, we had to use the result socket of the mix node and connected it to the height socket of the bump node. And now moving ahead, you can even try to change the strength of this bump effect from the strength option here. Right now it is set to its maximum value of 1, but I think that we should reduce it to something like 0 0.5 or 0 0.4 and now it looks better. Similarly, you can also control the roughness from here in the principal BSTF. And in this way, we created the simple looking snowman in our scene with all these geometry nodes and this snow material. And suppose you want to add a plane below this model and that too by using the geometry nodes. But if I press shift plus A and go to mesh, then in the primitives, there is no option of plane. But to add the plane, we have to select this grid option. And if I place it here, and if I connect it to the join geometry by taking this mesh socket and connecting it to the geometry here, the plane will get added in our scene, but we have to increase its size from here. So I'll change the size value in the X direction to a higher value like eight and also in the Y axis. Let's keep it to eight meters. And to move it downwards, we have to add the transform geometry node. So for this, press shift plus A, go to geometry and in the operations, you will find the transform geometry. Let's place it here. Take this mesh socket and connect it to geometry. Then we'll break the node connection in between the grid and the join geometry by holding the control button, right clicking and dragging like this. And then I'll take this geometry socket and connect it to the geometry socket of this join geometry. And now I can use the translation in the Z axis to move this plane downwards. Let's keep it to a value of somewhere around minus 0.5 0.3 or maybe minus 0.6 and now it looks perfect and there's one more important thing to note here if i go to the layout workspace again you will notice that our object is not visible here. To fix this, go to the geometry nodes workspace again. And here in the geometry nodes editor, we have not connected the entire node system to the group output. For this, I'll take this geometry socket and connect it to the geometry socket of the group output. And now if I go to the layout workspace again, here we have our snowman added. Let's turn on the render view from here. And this is how it looks. So we created this simple scene in this chapter with the help of all the geometry nodes. And we even understood about each one in complete detail. And this also brings us to the end of this chapter. So our next chapter will be chapter number 31, Geometry Nodes Creating Buildings. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel, press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.